So in this part, I am going to uh, I uh, I explain to you uh, in the 20 minutes before the philosophy behind the whole of this, and maybe you say, "Wow, to the end the philosophy. What do you really do?" So now we are going to go. Back. We will converge very soon on the on the reality of the things that I was uh, telling to you, but. Uh, now we see uh, what is the, how is made the, the geoframe system deployment. As programming language, we use Java. And, uh, but you don't need to use Java in this course, obviously. Uh, an alternative can be C++, C++ or Fortran or other languages, obviously. The choice was uh, due to the fact that uh, we used this object modeling system framework that was built on Java. It was actually was built on Java because on Java there were available some uh, programming features like reflection that are also present in other mod in other programming language, but not, for instance, in the original soft, uh, Fortran when this was uh, made the first time. We, we, we use Python scripting for running, for analyzing, the, especially the time series. Actually, we can use Python scripting also for analyzing the, the, the geographical data, but uh, in this course, probably, we will use more often a GIS system like uh, uh, QGIS. Um, OMS, I already said, but I will say also later on more. And uh, the practical tools we use to analyze the data, the input and the output, will be the Jupyter lab. I don't, I'm not telling you uh, what, what, what the, the core of those things is, if you don't know, but we will see soon. <coughs> All right, this is an alternative for sure. This uh, represents an alternative. The R community, R is a software for doing uh, especially statistical analysis. If you work on statistics, you get to, to know how. No way. And the, the R community is very active, and they also develop, in reality, a framework similar to ours. It's not exactly as complicated as, as our but, uh, or complete as our, in, in the design, but you can do many, many things in, in a little, becoming hot here. When the sun goes up, here we are facing south, and this is becoming really Another way can be use Fortran, not the, the build the core Fortran, just the core Fortran, and for instance, in system like the Earth Science Modeling Framework, which is promoted by UCAR, maybe someone of you knows. Uh, some uh, um, American institutions promoted the idea that uh, for connecting, for doing, especially weather model in the future, actually in the past, let's say in the sense that Earth Science Modeling Framework is there from 10 years at least, maybe 12. We, they have to use a modeling by components. So they have an ocean model, a, a weather forecast model, and things they have to connect together. Earth Science Modeling Framework is one. Another solution is uh, C Sharp, which is the language similar to Java uh, promoted by Microsoft, and OpenMI. OpenMI is a, a similar framework of OMS, much more invasive, actually, that was promoted by many, for instance, the Thales, uh, for instance, uh, Wallingford Software, we at the beginning, we were using OpenMI with Java. 
but then we abandoned OpenMI because uh, it was too invasive in programming. Actually, version, version two of OpenMI that I think is the, the current one is called Trento version because we established here in Trento how to, where to go. <laughs> then we, we, we move our software to, a, to, to OMS with the reduction of more of 50% of the line of code. Our code in OpenMI are of length 100, but our code in, in, open, in OMS is 60 lines of code, 40% less code. So uh, what is uh, OMS, in particular OMS3? Actually OMS3 then the OMS object modeling system has a, a way to do models, a way to do simulations. And then for doing models, there are a lot of tools already embedded in OMS, which are the calibration tools. And we will see a, a couple of them. And uh, there are some tools of visual analysis and some tools for documentation in OMS that are kind of becoming obsolete, actually, for the reasons that uh, in this moment for uh, Python is very powerful for visualizing the things and very standard also. So it, it becomes a lingua franca between scientists in many, in many areas. Uh, then there are uh, other things like ontologies, uh, like uh, uh, components, like uh, we talk about components, but ontologies and metadata are uh, all these kind of things that explain uh, what the models are doing. Met or the data are, in the case of metadata, as the name says, or ontology that uh, try to explain what the, the model does, uh, self-explain without you between uh, actually making, communicating the, the piece of models. And then on, on here we have web, web services database, a source rep repository to which the, the OMS system provide uh, provide uh, connections. The components uh, essentially work like this. The model is uh, things like this. We have the input data. The, our modeling solution actually is made by two components, component C and component B, which make a bigger component, which is called component A. And then we have the output data here. And then in case we can have other components here, plug it together to, to produce the results. There is another thing which is a cloud service integration and sometimes called also innovation. <coughs> Cut form on my computer and this uh, is not green, it's blue. But the concept uh, and the cloud serving uh, uh, integration platform is a, a platform that um, implement a model as a service system, meaning that there is a, a platform that works on a server. When you have a component that works in, in OMS, it works also in the cloud service provider. So you can work on remote. And this obviously is very useful because uh, it uses Kubernetes, other things, other, other technologies under the hood. But it's very useful because, for instance, you, have, you can have a server running your model and you can command your server, for instance, from a mobile. And this experience was done not exactly with our model, but this, this is doable, and the people at the uh, USDA did it. This is <coughs> the Rusle model is a model of erosion. This is a part that get, has to go with transact uh, elevation and things. Um, years ago, I, I had the ambition to cover all these spaces for doing all this stuff, but the work, uh, the work was rightly overwhelming. So we concentrated in the last 10 years just on, on the modeling code. Another thing that we have under the hood are geotools that actually at the present are a legacy for us because uh, GeoTools works well with Java 8. 
and not and with Java 13, which is the last release of Java. So, but Geotools are providing the libraries for the analyzing uh, raster data and uh, shape files, meaning the, geog the geographic information. And actually, some of our tools were inserting GUC, which is actually 3.2, not 2. So all the technology that our GeoFrame is uh, exploiting are more or less presented in these uh, circles. GeoFrame that does node, that does uh, radiation, that does vegetation. Inside, we then we use J Jupiter for representation. This is the symbol of OMS3. Then we use, uh, it can be used or programmed in Eclipse or IntelliGate or in other uh, IDs, we use Python and Java. We put some of our works and comments on OSF, Open Science Framework. Our material is most of there, the one on, and uh, the code is on GitHub. Actually, our code can be run on Docker. There is a version that works on Docker. We don't use Docker here. Because most, of, as you see, most of you is a Windows mm -hmm. user. Mm -hmm. Most of you has a Windows Home, yes. and Docker doesn't work well on, on, on Windows Home. So, yeah. would be easier to work on Docker, but it would not is not be such so easy in uh, to trigger Docker to, to make it work properly on Windows Home. We had a lot of problems. Uh, I had a lot of problems with students running Docker and things. So we will not follow that way. Our code then is, uh, mm. uh, is on GitHub, but not only on GitHub, is uh, when uh, is uh, um, continuously in, um, co uh, in co continuously um, compiled. And the compile actually, actually our code is uh, uh, compiled to a, a, um, a building system called, called Gradle. Uh, maybe some of you know Maven. Uh, uh, Gradle, uh, some of you know knows what is a make, fa a make command in Unix? No. When you have, essentially when you have to compile a model, you have to uh, you have to give the, the instruction to a compiler. You can use IDs like Eclipse or IntelliGate, for instance. And they inside the IDs, which is in this interface, you can write the code, but then it also manage the compiling of the code. But each of the IDs has its own strategy for doing that. It sometimes uses also different virtual machine in our case. And uh, with Gradle, uh, Gradle is a scripting language that put order to the compilation. So it, it makes the compilation independent from the, the ID you use. If you like to use this one or the other one, or even a third one, you can program the code with, with your, but then the compilation is done with Gradle. Uh, our code is on GitHub. Here you see two things. One is called Water Budget, and the other one actually is called JSWIM. Maybe some of you know SWIM. S W M M. SWIM is a, a code made by EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States. And the recent is a, a rainfall or not model, actually. The science of the the swim is, uh, let's say, on the 70s, maybe. Uh, but the, the, the around, around this core that was given for granted for many years, people, especially in urban hydrology, built around a lot of tools uh, <coughs> for doing things. So uh, swim became the, the tool of election for people doing uh, urban hydrology. And we have a version that we will not talking about it here, but we have a version of Swim made in Java and in OMS. 
So what we have other in, uh, in uh, GeoFrame, we have tools for uh, doing DEM analysis and geomorphic analysis, around 60 tools, uh, components. Uh, we have uh, tools for doing spatial interpolation, the, and we, we will use it. Uh, we have uh, tools for estimation of the radiation budget, long wave and short wave radiation budget, and we will use it. Estimation of about transpiration, and then we will do it. And estimation of a, a, a runoff production and channel routing that also we use. So we, we will use those part in the unit approach. Then we have a, a chain here, mainly due to Nicolo. Here's the integration of Richard's equation in 1D to D. Sometimes. Now we have that and sometimes we will have 3 d But the 1D to D is coupled to the energy budget. With uh, below zero and under zero, actually, with some differences, which is part of his of his um, PhD uh, work. We have some tools of stability analysis, not yet there, maybe done by Giuseppe, but I know that it is there, and then we have JSP and other stuff, uh, various other stuff. So when, what you learn in this course would be you can spend it also for doing the other things. Obviously, you have to learn a little bit of different things for input outputs and other stuff, but the main concept remains those ones. We will use a console that I will show here in the next slide, which is, no this one. We will use this one for running our model in this class. But potentially, you can use directly to run directly in the, um, in the Jupyter lab. Jupyter lab gives you, as you will see, an interface like, like this one, where you can mix uh, different, also different languages, scripting languages. <coughs> for uh, managing the data and running the components. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, for the future, I hope we will be, we'll be able to eliminate the console and work directly in JupyterLand. Because as I told before, this is becoming a, a, a standard for using in many. JupyterLab, you can run Python, you can run R, that I mentioned before. You can, in my Jupyter lab, you, you, I can run also Java. Another thing. So there are uh, things that we will see maybe in the last day also. So more or less, this is the implementation of the choice of Do you have questions? Yes. What is the geoframe scale? I mean, in terms of area that gives gives us optimum output, like a small scale unhinged basin. Yeah, yeah. GeoFrame is an uh, agnostic to that. We uh, program, uh, uh, we publish paper on a small catchment of uh, uh, 100 square kilometer, and uh, we did also some work on. Uh, a smaller scale, few square kilometers. With the, and uh, we did a, a work on the Blue Nile, 175,000 square kilometers, and on the uh, and also a river in India, the uh, the Krishna River. So you so can. No limitation. There is no limitation. Obviously, there are limitations in memory and process time. And uh, it, as you will uh, see, uh, it depends of, also on the granularity of the, um, how where, where you apply the models. When we work on the, on the Blue Nile, our, uh, our, the size of our individual 
catchment was around 400 square kilometers. So one single forecast from one 400 square kilometers. When we work on, on the Posina River, our smallest hour was less than a square kilometer. It depends on you. And the parameters, obviously, all depends on the physics here, and the real physics is here is in the parameters. Other questions? <laughs>